Now to prepare your footage, I couldn't possibly cover all of that in one video tutorial, so I'm going to break that down into different segments, but I will give you a big overview of the type of things that you can do to your footage to prepare it. So like, let's say you have DVD footage, you load your T2V index into your editor, scan through, and let's say, like this is this is Karas, the prophecy, so it should be interlaced. Okay, so you can see those lines there, that's interlacing, maybe I can find a better part that shows it. Okay, this is clearly interlaced footage, and I want to remove that. I can just simply add a command to the next line, let's just say TFM, close the brackets, well open and close the brackets, hit F5, and now the interlacing is removed. You can actually get better scripts at this, okay, because TFM might not do a very good job by itself. What I personally do is I have a template, um, if I can just go find my file here. What I start off with, and I'll, I'll try to share my scripts with you if I can, um, is something like this. Okay, It's a modified script. <laughs> it, it still uses TFM, but it uses it in combination with TD interlace. And if you add that and press F5, it typically does a better job at deinterlacing. And, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Usually what I do is just trial and error. I put a script there. If it works, great! If it doesn't work, I try something else, or I read the documentation, which is what you should do, to figure out how to manipulate these numbers so that it tweaks it better and deinterlaces better. Another thing you might want to know is frame rate. Okay, I'll make a separate tutorial for this. Most footage is not actually 29.97 frames per second. It's actually 23.976. The only reason it's coming up is 29.97 is because you're using North American DVDs, and that's the frame rate on DVDs. So what they do is add interlacing and add duplicate frames, or do all sorts of weird stuff to the footage to make it meet that standard. If you want to get it back to the original, you can go T decimate. Add that, press F5. Um, the number of frames will decrease, okay? Uh, approximately 20% of your frames, duplicate frames will be removed. Now you've got a lower frame rate, and this is the actual frame rate that you should have. So like, if I go through, and I can see this snow here, I step through using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Each frame is basically unique, and that's going to keep your frame rate nice and smooth so that the animation looks really nice and smooth. Yes, I hope that made sense. You might also want to clean your footage. You may or may not, okay? Sometimes your footage will have like artifacts in it, depending on your footage type, how old it is or whatever. Um, and you might want to like remove dot crawl, uh, de-rainbow it, de-block it, uh, remove some noise, anti-lace it, uh, remove artifacts. If it's really blurry, you might want to sharpen it. You might want to remove halos, banding, over-filtering, blended frames, jerky frames, aspect ratio, all these weird things that, um, you can use ABI Synth to deal with, and uh, I can't go all of those right now. And a lot of DVD footage is pretty noisy, so you might want to add a clean filter. You might not notice what it's doing, but it's definitely going to make it so that you can compress your footage easier later on, like your file sizes will be a bit smaller. If you scan through your footage and you see that there are black borders somewhere, you might not like those, so you can get rid of them by going crop, 8 pixels on the left, 0 pixels on the top, minus 8 pixels for the right, and minus 0 pixels for the bottom. Hit F5, and now it's chopped off those borders. And I also know that Karas has an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. I know this from the back of the DVD, and it also told me with DG index. So let's resize. Hit F5, and now it's stretched the footage so that it's the correct aspect ratio. Now if you do look down here, it's not actually 16 by 9, but it's close enough for me without having to alter the height or getting overly technical for this tutorial. I might also want to sharpen the footage a bit, so I'm going to sharpen faster mod, hit F5, and it'll sharpen it a bit. Also be aware that the more filtering that you do to your footage, uh, the longer it's going to take to process it later. And because resizing and sharpening tends to break a gradient, I can try to fix that with um, a gradient fixer, like grad bump here. And lastly, if your editing program can't handle 23.976 frames per second, you can go assume FPS, 23.98, hit F5, and now you'll have 23.98 frames per second instead of 23.976. So that's about it. At least that's what I would do if I didn't want to put too much effort into tweaking my script. 
Um, if you want to know more about the Avian Synth scripting language, I'll provide a link for you. And just to reiterate, other footage may require different scripts, but this is a pretty common scenario for North American DVDs, so that might be all you need, or you might not need to do any of that. But if you're satisfied with your script, and you like the way your footage looks, then by all means just go File, Save Script As, and save it for later. Okay, so those are the basics that you need to know about preparing your footage. If you want, you can go on to the other tutorials on preparing and cleaning, or just jump right into converting your footage.